Have you been told that your SI joints are unstable or you have SI joint instability? Your SI joints are made up of the articulation between the innominate bones and the sacrum. The SI joints help transfer load between your spine and the lower body and function as shock absorbers. Some of the movement that occurs at the SI joint is innominate movement on sacrum, sacral movement on innominate, nutation where the tip or top of the sacrum tips forward, and counter nutation where the top of the sacrum tips backward. They can also move together. In this model, it seems like this area moves a lot, but this is really not true. There's only about one to four degrees of movement at the SI joint, which is about one to two millimeters of motion, which is extremely small and difficult to detect clinically. It's limited due to several really strong ligaments that are designed to provide stability for this area of the body. Not to mention all the other muscles and connective tissues that surround the SI joint, pelvis, and spine and contribute to its stability. In connective tissue disorders like Ehlers-Danlos syndrome is where you would start to see a change in the structure of ligaments systemically, and it's often accompanied by a variety of other symptoms. But even in these cases, ligamentous strength or laxity is not predictive of pain. Instability is often assumed when pain is present, but pain does not equal instability. Pain is much more complex than that. PTs will often prescribe stabilization exercises where they block motion between the pelvis and the spine, and patients might improve in terms of their pain and decrease of symptoms with these exercises, but that does not mean that it was because of instability. It might simply reflect better strength, better motor control, and reduce sensitization to the area. True instability is when there's been a change to the structure of a joint. For example, if you dislocate the shoulder and the actual head of the humerus detaches or pulls away from the glenoid fossa, it would take a huge amount of force and a severe high energy trauma like in a car accident to dislocate the SI joint. So what about ligamentous laxity such as during pregnancy due to changes in hormones and SI joint pain? Ligamentous laxity due to hormonal changes doesn't mean that there will be pain or symptoms of SI joint pain. Not every single pregnant woman will experience SI joint pain during pregnancy. It's not necessarily the laxity causing the pain, but the laxity might be coupled with other factors like strength of the surrounding muscles, breathing patterns, lack of exercise, or other global changes in the body happening during this time. The whole point of this post is just to arm you with a bit more information on your anatomy and your biomechanics and your physiology so that you can be better informed that if you're ever in a situation where someone says something about you is unstable or lacks stability, you can ask more questions and make sure that you're getting the best care and treatment possible.